Tell us how you got started on peonies farming and how you figured out how to do some of these incredibly efficient ways of farming peonies. Yeah, good question. Um, I was, it was just a time when I was looking for something a little bit different, something that uh, I could be passionate about and a change up of what I was doing. I was doing a lot of commercial fishing and then I had a little store in the spit and I was just kind of ready for a change. Someone said to me, have you heard about the peony project or the peony information studies that are coming out of the University of Alaska, Fairbanks? And I said, no. So I went online and read them and I thought, that sounds like fun. I'd like to try that. I can do that. So from there, I knew that with my whole family being commercial fishermen and leaving at the end of April every year doing halibut and doing salmon that I would have to design if I wanted to do this I had to design it so that I could manage it myself most of the time 90 percent of the time it would just be me so having gardened for you know all my life and uh, my folks had an organic farm and their parents were homesteaders and coming from a long line, you take all that information, you compile it, and you pick out what you need to know or what you need to use from that. And I just figured out that weeds were going to be my biggest issue. So I actually came up with the raised beds, which you use in Alaska regardless, raised beds everywhere, um, and then covering them with the Thai par for weed suppression. We cut out the holes using a propane torch because I'd used Typer for 30 years up here and I knew that you had to bond the edges or it frays. And so we use a torch that melts the edges to keep it from fraying. All I have to worry about then is just the area directly around the plant to weed. So that gate, you know, keeps my time weeding down to where I can manage with, with a little bit of help and I do hire help. I thought that I liked the idea of getting back into gardening and back to the dirt. I'd always had a garden, a big garden, but this was flower farming. I mean, how romantic and lovely. Everybody says, I want to be a flower farmer. It's a lot of work, but I wanted to get back to kind of what, my, what I was raised with, just farming and gardening and working in the dirt. And my husband was all about it because he got to have a tractor. So he loves his Kubota. We're running out of land for him to till. <laughs> so he's been a huge, you know, he was a huge supporter from the beginning on everything. And so between us, it's been a really fun project. Um, I'll have an idea and he's the engineer. He'll figure out how to make the idea that I have work. The whole thing has worked so well. The plants are really happy. I'm at right at 1,500 feet, about five feet below 1,500 feet here. So as far as I know, it's the highest elevation peony farm in Alaska. And we are um, the latest, as far as I know, in Alaska. I start cutting my buds um, August 30th, 31st, right in there this year. So I'm still, I'm about done now, but I don't cut very many because the plants are so young, but I'm about finished. These guys, you know, after this week, everything will be taken, all the flowers will be taken off, and then I'll let the plants die back, and then in October, um, probably the end of October, we'll just start cutting the plants off, and you have to take all that foliage out of the field. All the stems and leaves has to come out of the field and be burnt. You can't leave anything in the field because of botrytis which is a virus that um, the plant itself carries and can infect the next year's crop. And that's the number one way to prevent fungus and, most, and virus infestation is getting rid of old foliage from the fields and keeping a clean field. And then you won't ever have to use chemicals. And we organically um, garden and farm, so we don't use chemicals, so I tr preventative prevention is the best medicine. <laughs> so that's what we do. And your pond right there is oh, for. Oh, you love is, that pond. Yeah, is, is that your source of water for watering them? That we just completed it this year. <laughs> I I had it full last year, but during the winter, 
a moose stumbled through when the drifts got real big and it cut a slice in the pond liner. And in the spring, I watched the water just disappear. And so we had to drain it out, find the hole, patch it. And then um, we actually brought water in, which will be the only time we'll ever do that, but to fill it up and um, get the liner tight so we could finish the landscaping around it. But the, that's a reservoir for when um, we have a dry, dry spring, which we actually did have a pretty dry spring this last spring into summer. It went a long time without ever soaking down into the soil. Um, one thing I found was the tight part really helps to minimize that evaporation process, and I don't panic about water as much, you know. If you have to water, what's your means of water? Just a hose running through the field? We have a pump that goes into the pond, and we uh -huh. do have we have multiple hoses that come out. And what we'll do is we'll have a uh, emitter drip emitter system, and you'll hook up to the ends, and you'll do oh, okay. you'll drip water you know, sections of the field at a time. You'll be doing this one, then do that for a few hours, then you shut it off and you reattach it to another section of the field. And we'll do it like that. Um, for me, the only time I really get nervous about water is, say, about July 1st, because it's been dry all of June, you know, <laughs> usually. And, but, um, so far, the soil's retained enough moisture. Peony plants are, by and large, really drought tolerant. They don't like to be wet, but they are really drought tolerant. So I haven't had a big watering issue. But that reservoir will help us back up our, our well system. And then if the, in the event, you know, of fire or wildfire and we did have that Fritz Creek fire that you could watch you know you were probably pretty nervous about I was that really nervous. <laughs> I yeah really watching nervous. it burn and that's when we realized you know it'd be a good idea to have a reservoir mm -hmm. here that just cuz yeah